All right, mates, welcome back to the channel. JL Scott Fishing and Eats. Hope everyone's doing well. This is going to be part one of this uh, little trial we're going to do um, with some of these baits. Um, for those of you who know, I fish a lot in a lot of the rivers in Western Maryland, up into PA, and also um, um, in uh, Western Virginia. Um, and a lot of times those rivers can be two feet or less. Right now, we've, we've come back down. It's, it's 1.6 feet at Point of Rocks, Maryland. On the upper Potomac, um, and there are stretches in there even now in December um, that are a foot deep. Um, and so when that happens during the spring and summer, and it does occasionally before you get a lot of the rains, um, or you get a lot of the snow that melts in Upper PA, uh, New York, that comes down um, the tribs and the rivers, the streams, and all that. Um, you're really dealing with two feet, three two. Uh, you know, a foot and a half to two feet or less in a lot of areas between islands and the narrows and in the gap. And a lot of times it can be really, really hard. Um, you can see smallies, but it can be really, really hard to get hookups on these smallies. One, because they see you. Um, they're really, really skittish. Um, or it's really a coloration. It's meaning the baits being thrown by a lot of mates um, that don't get a lot of hookups are these bright, like, pattern uh, baits that are often coming from big box stores or the store aisle that are basically manufactured for, for by and large, the entire country, whether it's a, a chain store that has locations throughout a specific region or a national, you know, a national chain. So that's not, you know, um, so they do that, you know, in terms of their buying to be able to put the same one. That's why most stores that you see, have shad and crawl and then that fire color like say this right very prominent colors perch color shad pat shad color and then crawls all different colorations that will probably fit in those three um, forage species right didn't matter whether you're in california new york florida right and then of course other tackle shops have kind of everything in between and then the custom guys tweak that stuff so that's what we're going to talk about so I've got some baits that are store bought, okay? Major retailer, okay? Um, these baits are actually um, craw, the crawfish category. Um, they've been out for a few years now, I think two years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and now there's actually some blanks coming out for custom bait makers now. They kind of mimic these, I think. I think these might have been one of the original. Not really sure about that. Um I'm sure there are others out there online um, that um, that are, are, are available. Um, but basically, this is the bait, okay? So you've got two trebles, smaller trebles. Not a big fan of the hooks that are on the store-bought selection, okay? Um, this one's not as bad. I actually have caught fish on this one. I have three each of these colors, okay? Um, because that's how I'm going to do the test is I've got three, three of this color, three of this color, okay, and then three of the red, okay, um, and we're going to put that to the test, because I'm going to keep one of them red, but then I'm going to have all of these painted by Custom Bait Maker um, out west, Brian Chapman, and to reflect, he's got a great crawl, pattern library okay of colorations of different crawl species the invasive species that have gone across the country in both directions from the gray lakes right like in different basins and gone into different categories whether it's like rusty crawl in the susquehanna um and then the crawls that they have out west okay so he's got a real depth of a portfolio of colorations that he's done on other baits so we're going to work on dialing these into the Eastern Crawl um, patterns that are going to mimic exactly the exactly what the crawl look like. And you've seen my videos. If not, you can go back and watch a lot of the YouTube videos and the shorts on the channel um, from the Potomac River Crawl and the Susquehanna Crawl where I've, I've pulled it out. Or you can go on the Facebook page, JL Scott Fishing and Eating, you can see the actual pictures of what the crawl looks like in different stages of the year, you know, as 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 they come out of the mud in the spring and then they start digging down 
about two weeks ago, actually, two, three weeks ago, where they start kind of moving into finding um, where their home is going to be, um, you know, for the winter time. Um, and so, like, this doesn't really mimic a natural crawl, right? I mean, we can all agree on that. But this is a pattern set that it's a traditional pattern color scheme that sells for a lot of people um, and a lot of brands. You know, most people will call it like Fire Tiger, Chartreuse Black, um, Perch, all that. But so that's not really. This one actually is closest to, you know, a little bit of the coloration um, because of that color towards towards it. A lot of them have that dark green pumpkin brown um, to the tops, maybe some more red on the sides, like the Rusty Crawl. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to have custom painted in those forms. I like the action, um, you know, for the most part, but I've had a lot of smallies come and just not be enticed. And I think it's because these they're unnatural, okay? And I know people have, you know, this notion that smallies will eat anything. Um, and I'm sure that's, you know, there may be some truth to that. But when you're in two feet of water and you can see them move and move away um, as you're working it, you, you, there's something else to the scenario, right? Um, now, typically what I would do, and this happened dozens of times, is I would grab a second rod that had a jig, had a jig, a pump green pumpkin jig, or a crawl pattern jig, um, or a hair jig, throw that in there right after, and I get a strike. Okay, so that tells me there's something odd about the presentation or the color of these, which is why I'm going to do this experiment. Not only that, is because I have three of each, and I'll have three painted, maybe more, uh, painted by Brian, I'm also going to modify this bait, um, to attempt another presentation, which would be like using a switchblade, okay, um, or shaky blade, flat or bent shaky blade, okay, which would go here to create even more flash in the water. Because remember, we're talking about two feet or less of water. So what that what that what that blade up top also does is it adds a little bit of weight to your bait, which may increase your castability, get you a little further. Because remember, ten yards can be ten yards further can be at everything in terms of the smallies, right? Especially if you've got the sun out. Remember, you don't want to be in the river. You know when you provide that shade type, sun's behind you. You're moving in a direction. And all of a sudden, you shade the river in front of you. Smallies pick up on that. And you'll watch them. If you do that, even when you're not fishing, if you just watch the water and you come across and you don't position correctly, you'll watch them. You will spook them because of that change in light. The other side of it is when you're dealing with two feet of water is you've got the penetration of the sun, especially in the summertime, that comes right into the water column and, refl and hits the river composition on the bottom, right? You've seen that. If you're looking at it, you can see how that light spectrum changes and shifts on the bottom, right? Um, in two feet of water or less. And so a lot of that also has to do with what's that, what's that light going to do with the bait, okay? That's why I want to put that shaky blade um, or potentially a switch blade in, in various colors on it to get a little bit of flash, okay? Because that also, as you're moving this, can trigger a little bit of strike. The other thing that I would pro well, look to do to compare the three, so go with original like these, go with a custom painted, okay, to reflect the actual forage in the river system, and then do a, one modification is swap out the hooks on these. These are very, very, very small custom, um, you know, store on the hooks, okay? And look, they're not, okay? They're not my cup of tea. Like when it comes to like, I want something that if they swipe at it and if, I, if I'm pulling that and I got that cloud, if I got that mud cloud up underneath on the bottom, I want them to come in and crush like 
And I don't want that to be like, I'm not even getting, see that? It's just not, okay? You want, you know, that hook on it that is just going to boom. It's going to set in there. Um, so a little bit stronger hook and maybe two different size hooks on it. Um, so we're going to play around with that. But that's just what we're going to do here. So we've got, so this is part one. And as soon as I get these baits back um, from Brian, I'll do another video. Um, and I'll link this video to it in case no one um, saw the original video. But these are the three colorations right now. Okay. That we are going to have repaint into custom natural colors. Okay. And there's also a fourth one. But the fourth one actually, ironically, is a shad pattern crawl. Okay. It's the typical, like, think bomber crankbait. Dark black on the top, um, cream white on the on the sides, and a little bit of pink uh, pink rose on the belly, like like a bomber crankbait. Um, and that one is caught more um, than the crawl pattern, right? The same again, it's the same bait. Okay, it's a crawl presentation, but it's in a shad pattern, so that's unique. So I might get get with Brian. We may I may do a little bit of uh, I may add a shiner. A shiner pattern for the Susquehanna into the mix. Um, and I don't know if I have anything. Something similar to this that um, Brian can do. Um, this is more of like a perchy type, but the smallmouth love this in a jerk bait. Something like that. That's more brown, gold. Um, and then I'm thinking with uh, with the shake of the gold shaky um, shaky blade. It's just like the blades that are on like, you know, chatter baits, right? Um, that are really successful, but also spinner baits are really, really successful in Susquehanna, um, with the differing, um, differing, uh, gold blades, um, and shiner body and, um, and skirt and that. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do a little cool crawfish series here. This is part one. Remember right off the shelf. Okay. Boom. Right off the shelf, big box store modifications. We're going to take these modifications up, change out the hooks, change out um, the colorations, add a uh, switch or shaky blade to one of the sets of three, um, and then we'll compare them um, when they come back, and then we'll do the on-the-water test um, out in uh, the Upper Potomac and the Susquehanna. So this will be a kind of probably a three-part series. So I look forward to it. All right, mates.